Ask Chinese people to make a short list of their biggest concerns, and health care will be on almost every list. The much publicized cases of patients attacking doctors reveal broader systemic problems. Despite much efforts to improve health care, why are there still so many complaints? The public complains about overcrowded, understaffed hospitals. Doctors complain about being overworked and underpaid. Hospital management complains about increasing costs and insufficient funds. Moreover, what about gross imbalances in medical quality, especially between urban and rural areas? What about incentives to overcharge, like excessive prescriptions of drugs? And what about the anti-corruption campaign in health care? Health care reform is now a priority in China. What are the objectives of reform, the critical success factors? What's the optimum role of government? We talk to three experts. Professor Liu Xiaoyun works on social medicine and health statistics at Beijing University. Dr. He Xiaoxun is vice president of the largest hospital in Guangdong province at Sun Yat-sen University. And Professor Ren Jian Ming at Beihang University is a leading authority on corruption, especially corruption in health care. To understand health care is to be closer to China. March 23, 2012, at one of Harbin's top hospitals, a 20-year-old trainee doctor, Wang Hao, was stabbed to death. The assailant was a 17-year-old Li Meng Nan. Li was a rheumatology patient at the hospital. Doctors told him that he first needed to recover from other illness before he could take drugs for his rheumatism. Li Meng Nan said he had become angry because he thought he had been refused treatment at the hospital. I don't know him. The doctors kept postponing my treatment. They asked me to take numerous examinations and I felt angry. According to a report, in 2014 there are a total of 115,000 medical disputes in China. Tensions between doctors and patients are troubling Chinese society. The strained relationship between uh, patients and doctors in China seems to have developed only in the last few years. Uh, why is this the case? Uh, there are many stories that we hear about patients attacking doctors, terrible things. Uh, but why has it happened just fairly recently? And what can be done to change it? Well, I think tensions between doctors and patients actually reflect the big picture of social relationships, only that the medical sector reveals the problem more severely than other areas. The reason is that, generally speaking, illness is a bad thing that costs money and threatens people's life. When patients start with a bad mood and find it difficult to see a doctor in a medical system that is by no means well developed, there is a great likelihood of escalated tensions if the result fails patients' expectations. The problem's escalation speaks of the reason and also the motivation for medical reform at present. China's health care reform dates back to the 1950s, when the country implemented its rural cooperative medical systems. The system at the time consisted of so-called barefoot doctors who were based in rural and remote areas, outpatient clinics that were run by state-owned enterprises, and county hospitals that treated patients with serious illness. The system significantly improved life expectancy in China from the 1950s to the early 1980s. Today, hospitals in China are organized according to a three-tier system, primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions. Primary hospitals typically are township hospitals that contain less than 100 beds. Secondary hospitals tend to be affiliated with medium-sized cities, counties, or districts. They contain more than 100 beds, but less than 500. Tertiary hospitals are comprehensive or general hospitals, with all the medical specialties at the city, provincial, or national level, and with the bed capacity exceeding 500. And at those three levels, approximately how many people would they serve at the uh, village level, the township, or the county, just roughly? 
usually in the county level it's half million uh -huh. people and the, in the village level several thousand mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and township, township 10 20 or 20 thousand or 30 thousand sometimes in late 1980s and early 1990s china's economic reform began to affect the country's health care system factories no longer ran their own health care clinics Government subsidies to public hospitals began to decline. As a result, an increasing number of patients began to crowd tertiary hospitals for diagnosis and treatment. Public hospitals began to operate like private hospitals. And disparities in health care quality between urban and rural areas began to emerge. At the same time, due to the current salary system in public hospitals, doctors' salaries can seldom meet their expectations. This is especially true at the level of primary health care. That's when rebates from drug companies kicked in, both to hospitals and to doctors. And distrust between doctors and patients began to fester. Though a series of reforms were introduced between 1980 and 2000, the level of actual benefits remained low. Of all the issues, first and foremost is the disparity between tertiary hospitals in major cities and primary hospitals in townships. So let's get on the table all the, the major problems of the health care system today. I mean, I can list a few. I mean, we have obviously big disparities between rural and urban areas. Uh, we have um, uh, disincentives for public hospitals or private, all hospitals, to efficiently allocate services because they have to pay for their own existence. Uh, those are two big problems. So what are some other problems? Uh, one of the problems in my mind, in my research experience, I think is uh, the, for the public hospitals, uh, I mean, they need to, what their role should be to provide service to people with some kind of severe diseases. So, and we have the prim primary health care facilities, including township health centers and the uh, village clinics and the community health centers in the urban area. So they should provide primary health care. But we don't have a gatekeeping system. So the patient's first contact, they can choose any hospital they want. So this is a big problem current in the, in the current situation. So we want, what we want the, the country, the government want to achieve is to have an ordered uh, seeking, health seeking behavior. Mm -hmm. People, the first, the first contact should be the primary health care system. And then only in some certain institutions they can be referred to the higher level hospital. This is a, to me, this is a very big uh, problem now. And the second problem I feel is the, the quality of health care, so especially the primary health care, because pe then people don't trust the, um, the primary health care, they choose the high level hospital. So we need to develop the quality of health care in the primary health care level. In terms of the resource allocation, urban and rural areas still have a quite big gap. The disparity between rural areas and is quite is quite a big gap. In, yeah, we have some statistics, like uh, for example, the number of physicians in the rural area is kind of twice in that in, in rural area. Number of nurses three times uh, than in the rural area. So this this gap is still. This is a this is a statistic per capita or or or, or in total total the number of physicians per one thousand population, oh, okay. for example, the intensity of the uh, resources mm -hmm. it's about two to three times higher in the urban than in the rural area. We usually talk about the AAA or AA hospitals in China. If we look at the general structure of the current medical system, we have clinics at the grassroots communities, township health care centers in rural areas, and hospitals at the districts, counties, regions, municipalities, provinces, and then further up, national medical institutions in cities like Beijing and Shanghai. I think the system is totally okay. The problem lies in the allocation of resources. I think we have accumulated too many problems in the past, and it becomes very difficult to change the scenario within a short period of time. We face not only the problem of resources, say economic support and financial earmarks, but more importantly, we need to conquer the challenge of technologies. We have to deploy our talents to hit the nail on the head. Besides, we must be aware that such changes take time. It is very difficult to make dramatic changes. Lack of primary health care is a major problem in China. Some say it is the most important problem that China must tackle. 
In 2009, the Chinese government announced an ambitious plan to reform its healthcare system. It invested 124 billion dollars in its healthcare sector and achieved universal health coverage for Chinese citizens. But money alone did not bring about an immediate transformation to overcrowded hospitals. Dr. Wan Chan is going to work at Peking Union Medical College Hospital. It is one of China's leading hospitals. I seldom have time for water or bathroom during the day, so I have to get prepared. It's like heading towards a battleground. The hospital employs many of China's leading medical experts. Patients come from all over the country to consult with them. My mom and I visited many primary and local hospitals. The drugs they prescribed were not very effective. That's why we came to Peking Union Medical College Hospital. I went to a community hospital in Changping. The doctors prescribed some medication. After taking the medication, I felt my stomach was full of gas. That's why I started trying different hospitals. So far, Kunan has cured my disease. My wife got a lump in her throat. Doctors from local hospitals told us it can be cured through surgery. I think doctors here are more experienced, so we like to consult them before taking the surgery. I didn't go to community hospitals because doctors there are not as experienced as those in Peking Union Medical College Hospital. This means that it is very hard to get an appointment here. Particularly in departments like Dr. Wang's, where it is country leading. On an average day in the clinic, Dr. Wang sees about 50 to 70 returning patients. This means about six minutes per returning patient. It takes at least half an hour to treat new patients. The overwhelming number of patients means there is no way one can provide them with the quality of care he would like to offer. In today's healthcare system, what precisely is the role of the public hospitals, especially in large urban areas? I think the public we we have two level of assist service delivery system: public hospital and the primary healthcare facility. For the public hospital, ideally, it should provide provide service to patients with complex and、uh, severe diseases, and the. Common disease and minor illness should be dealt with in the primary healthcare system. So this is the ideal system. But currently, because we don't have a gatekeeping system, so patients can choose their first contact freely, either hospital or tertiary hospital or primary visit clinic. So their role is not、um, realized in that in that way. So this, I think, this is the first、uh, first point I want to make. The second. In the, the second point is in the national policy, we frequently mention the term public interest. So the public hospital should have public interest, which is quite not very. To me, it's not a very clear term. What is public public interest? But at least for one thing, I'm sure is for some、uh, patients who cannot afford the healthcare cost, there should be some mechanism for them to afford that kind of medical、uh, expenses. Uh, occurred in public hospitals, but this is not only the role of public hospital, but also the、uh, need some help from the health insurance system. Huang Chenyu is a doctor at one of China's tertiary hospital. She's received 14 years of training, including nine years of clinical research. She spent three years studying overseas. As a newly graduate. Juan makes about five hundred dollars a month.、Uh, after around eight years of basic training, I became a doctor, a surgeon.、Um, at that time, the salary is around RMB three thousand to four thousand per month.、Um, after later, when I graduated from the Peking Union Medical College、uh, and got my、uh, po- the doctoral degree,、uh, the salary I expected would be. Ten thousand RMB per month, maybe, but actually,、um, the truth is that the salary is around、uh, five thousand to six thousand per month RMB.、Um, after my postdoc training at Harvard, I got the、uh, position of a lecturer at another teaching hospital of Harvard Medical School. The salary they provided、um, is sixty thousand per year. That is. 
$5,000 per month. According to a survey by Chinese Doctor Association, because of the work pressures and low incomes found in the profession, nearly 80% of the respondents say they don't want their children to be doctors in the future. Only 6.8% of doctors said they hope their children would take their career path they had chosen. Uh, healthcare workers in general, and even doctors in specific, are not paid high salaries. In, in, uh, in the West, in, in, uh, in, in private uh, doctors who have private practices can make a lot of money, so that attracts very good people. In, in China, uh, doctors are not paid officially um, high salaries, and it's limited, especially in public hospitals. And what that does is uh, it, uh, it encourages corruption, it encourages people uh, to get the best doctors by giving them so-called red envelopes with cash in it. Uh, and uh, incentives from drug companies. I mean, this is not, uh, in the West, I mean, drug companies have done the same thing, uh, maybe much less so at, at the doctor level, because the doctors already get, get high salaries. Um, how serious is, is this uh, in terms of the health care system? I agree that the salary level, income level of the, uh, the doctors at public hospital or in the primary health care facility are quite low comparing to other professionals. It's slightly above the average level of the society. Yeah. This is quite low comparing to the uh, industrialized countries. Yeah. Uh, I think there are two, two issues here. One is we, we really need to set up the, to reform the salary system because uh, it's not an um, easy, easy issue to address because it's not only a health sector problem. You need to compare to the civil servant system, to the, the overall society's uh, salary system. And the other issue is, the, as we discussed before, is the, uh, the profit-driven behavior. So to me, I feel that some policy needs to be addressed at the public hospital level to set up some regulations to prevent doctors who have that kind of behavior, corruption or other uh, unexpected behavior. In addition to providing proper health care, the Chinese government must also overcome problems emerging from a profit-driven market. In 1985, China launched market-oriented health care reforms. Public hospitals were encouraged to generate their own revenues with the aim of mobilizing medical workers and improving hospital efficiency. But the reforms brought about unintended consequences. When reform began, what happened to health care during the, when the planned economy began to transform to the market economy? What happened to health care in, in that process? And then we'll, let, let's start with that. Um, how how health care was during the early days, during the planned economy, and what happened in the early days of reform? Since early 1980s, Along with the health econo the economic reform, especially after 1985, we have the system has changed quite radically. Uh, we have increased the autonomy of the public hospitals, but at the same time reduced their uh, the financial investment into the public hospital. So the public hospitals need to rely heavily on the service fees from the provision of medical services. The uh, the the their behavior are more profit driven to some extent. Even though they're public hospitals, but the government subsidies, which used to be 100%, right, before yes. or 100%, now they're not 100%, so they have to Less than 10%. Less than 10%. Less than 10% of their total costs are funded by the budget. So the rest 90% 90, 90, 90 have, have to be earned from the revenue of the service provision. While doctors seek ways to make their hard work cost effective, hospitals also struggle for ways to generate revenue. Rebates from pharmaceutical companies soon found their ways into meeting this demand. In July 2013, Chinese authorities put British pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline under investigation for suspected bribery and tax-related offenses. Mark Riley, manager of GSK China, allegedly pressed his sales teams to bribe hospitals, doctors, and other medical institutions and organizations through various means in order to gain illegal revenues in the billions. Due to the extreme uh, overcrowding of hospitals uh, for doctors' time and the very low salaries that doctors are paid and traditional Chinese custom, it is commonly reported that there's a 
a tradition uh, uh, where uh, patients would give money to doctors, so-called Hongbao red envelopes. Uh, not only that, but hospitals have been known to take money from drug companies to prescribe treatments that are not necessarily are needed so they can get revenues because they need to generate revenues. So the whole financial system of health care needs restructuring. So I ask you, from the standpoint of doctors, how, would, how do doctors look upon the financial structure of the healthcare industry, and what's their recommendation for improvement? For public hospitals, payment to medical staff accounts for 30 percent of their expenditure. In America, the number is about 60 percent. So our data tell us how little Chinese medical staff earn for their performance. If we don't change the status quo, there will be problems sooner or later. According to investigations into public hospitals, for every RMB 40 out of RMB 100 that patients pay, 40 percent goes to pharmaceuticals and about 20 percent for facilities and equipment. These two make up 60 percent already. Then about 10% goes to miscellaneous fees like management, maintenance, and others. And so only about 30% is left for the salaries of medical staff. They can never really enjoy handsome pay. So we must do some structural change to drive down pharmaceutical prices, which matters a lot. Then equipment and facilities also cost a lot. Even more than in the U.S., this is abnormal. I myself have once done some research in this regard, and I put forth the question that in the planned economy in the past, there were also problems of malpractice and unwholesome tendencies, but corruption was never very serious. Why is it so as we go through economic restructuring towards a market economy? Personally, I think that in the transitional period, the market can play some role, but at the same time, the government imposes controls on the healthcare system. So the impacts from both the market and the government create many opportunities for corruption at this special point in time. Um, let, let's uh, uh, talk uh, more detailed about um, what some would call corruption in the system. Um, some uh, analysts in China would say that corruption is not a problem in healthcare because a problem means it's uh, something that's on top of the healthcare. But corruption in China is the foundation of healthcare. It's the only way it works. This is some of the criticisms that are made. It, it's the basis of the health care system is a kind of corruption where you have to pay doctors, either the drug companies have to pay the hospitals or the hospitals are overcharging the patients or prescribing things that they don't need. So to the degree that this is true, what are the kinds of reforms that have to be put in place to change the, the real essence of how the health system is worked, the, the behavioral motivations, the financial motivations that, that lead to this behaviors of the system. I mean, how can you reform this? First, I think the question is, um, how, do we, how do we reform the uh, corruption? But the first thing I want to clarify is, although I don't have the overall picture of the corruption in the health system, but I don't think it's the, as you said, it's the basis of the health system. I don't agree with that, that, with that part. Uh, I, it's, it's, I, I, we admit that there are some corruption behavior in the health system, but I don't know how, to what extent it is, it is uh, in, in the health system. Um, I think to the potential solution for that kind of behavior is to, in, in, in two parts. First, we need to set up the proper salary system to increase their salary, to reflect their qualification, the risk they bear, and the, 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 hard, the hardship they bear. So the salary system should be right to prove, if, if there is a correct system there, the doctors and nurses they won't do kind of uh, uh, that kind of behavior, profit-driven behavior. And the second part I would say is the, the government need to improve their regulation capacity. I think the quantity is quite weak to regulate the behavior of the 
doctors. Uh, uh, what kind of behaviors need to be regulated and how do you, how do you even do that? I think, to me, I, I want to uh, emphasize on some of the governance structure of the public hospital. So the government, the government hospital, because majority of the funds are collected from the service provision. So there are some two kind of decision making mm -hmm. in the public hospital. The first part of it is a big decision. Because the public hospital are owned by the public, so the government should be the owner of the public hospitals. So they should, the, the government as the owner of the public hospital should make some big decisions, like to appoint a director of the hospital, to decide whether you want to develop a new hospital, to build a new hospital or not, to develop or close a department. So that kind of big decision should be made by the owner or sponsor of the public hospital. The, an, an, another example is, uh, is the, to what extent the director of the hospital can claim the profit, oh. to use the profit, uh, 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 to allocate among the uh, health workers. Uh, I, uh, I think there, sh there should be a ceiling the government should set up a ceiling of the profit which the director can use to allocate within the, within the And anything houses. above that has to go back to the system. Sure, and, sure. Yeah, th this prevents an overcharging that's and the, over I think that's the over key. prescribing. Yeah, yeah so, so that, these that, are big decisions to be owned by the government, not the yeah. hospital themselves. But on the other hand, there are some small decisions, I would call it the small decisions, but the daily management, daily operation of the hospital, including the recruitment of new staff, including the financial management, how do you use financial incentive to motivate health workers in a certain department. So this kind of decision space should be decentralized to the director, to the hospital. For China to achieve its goal of becoming a moderately prosperous society by 2020, the vast majority of the Chinese people must have access to quality health care. And this means rural as well as urban citizens. Here's my prescription. Seven suggestions. One, the three-tiered hospital system will work only when people trust primary care at the township level. Local doctors must be capable. Two, salaries of health care professionals, especially doctors at all levels, must be increased. Three, Telemedicine should be prioritized, particularly in primary hospitals. Four, prescribing drugs and ordering tests must be decoupled from their financial benefits. Five, the private sector should increase its investment in management of hospitals and clinics, thus increasing competition in healthcare markets. Six, national medical insurance, a big step forward, needs to increase. Seven, the government must find its optimum role, such as setting limits on costs, disincentives to overcharge, and clear rules for what constitutes corruption. The president of a major hospital told me that to blame hospitals and doctors for corruption is wrong. Blame the system, he said. Well, China is now determined to change the system which involves other issues as well. For example, how can the private sector participate? We'll continue to explore health care reform to get closer to China.